Resource Update. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. We are in the days of Noah and Lot right now. Very amazing three weeks coming together right now on scheduled scripture reading, scheduled biblical commemoration dates, the celestial events that are going on right now, and with other celestial events coming onto the scene too as well in connection with the larger celestial events. What I am showing you right now is nothing that I'm making up. I'm drawing your attention to how all of these are lining up right now and how scripture has told us to be on the lookout for a lot of these things. And when we look into God's word and we explore the Shiloh prophecy and the Alpha and Omega and how that thread goes throughout the entire scriptures and we see the celestial signs acting out and rehearsing that story right now with also some important conditions relating to the rapture time and we see other celestial events reminding us of Christ's coming and the messenger and to prepare the way. And then we find the timing brings us right exactly to the time of the days of Noah and Lot too as well. And strong reminders of the flood and when it started and everything that Christ told his disciples to be on the lookout for and how the world would be when he comes back. So what we're seeing here is not just the one or two conditions with the Shiloh prophecy that we've been looking at. We're actually seeing multiple conditions come together right now. The Shiloh prophecy conditions about the gathering of his people, along with the conditions of being in the days of Noah, and the condition of being in the days of Lot too as well. And we find it right on the commemorative days of Noah and the flood too as well, which is also a condition when Christ said he would be returning to as well. And we see the entire story that we've been studying of the garden prophecy and how it relates to Shiloh and multiple other main crucial parts of this prophecy, the Alpha and Omega and how that also deals with the Revelation time period and the warnings that Christ gave in the book of Revelation, even in the beginning of it too as well. We see all this coming together right now and it should catch our attention. And this is why we watch, because we have faith in what Christ told us to look for. And he told us, watch and lift up your heads and you will see that your redemption, the day of your pickup. He doesn't say you will see your Redeemer drawing nigh. He says you will see your redemption. And redemption is when you pick up something that you've already purchased. He says you will see the day of your redemption drawing nigh. And we see that because we understand the prophecy. We look into God's word. What does God say? That is what our faith rests on. That's why we can go forward. We don't go forward on our feelings. No, we go forward on faith. This is what God said. And we see so many examples right now of individuals who went forward in faith, not on their feelings. When you look at Enoch, Noah, Abraham, the wise men, when you look at their stories and study their stories, and many times the Bible records that their feelings and their circumstances and things they were going through were very negative, but they went forward anyway. In spite of their frustrations, in spite of their circumstances, they rested on, they had faith on, what did God say? God called Abraham. That's why he went forward, even though he did not know where he was going. And we always have to keep this in mind. When we do not know the future, when we don't know how things are going to work out, when we don't know how God is working even in our own life and in our own circumstances, we don't go by our feelings because our feelings will go all over the map day to day depending on our circumstances. Other people have different circumstances. Their feelings are different. We go forward in faith. We trust God by faith. We occupy and we stay busy till he comes, but we go forward in faith, resting on what did God say? How did he call us? What does he want us to look for? What has he told us? What has he promised us? That is what we rest on. That is what we fix our heart on. That's what we fix our mind and eyes on. We are resting on God's word, his promise. And as long as we keep our eyes on him, then we can go forward in faith, even though there is so much we don't know. Now yesterday someone pointed out some links regarding the temple when it was finished and that traditionally it was finished on the 17th day. They were able to show some links to that, so special thanks to them. So that really makes it interesting. That really just shifted it over two days. But it is nice having that clarification of at least a Jewish understanding and the cultural understanding of when they view it as being finished. The same day as Noah entering the ark and the flood starting on the 17th day of the second month on the civil calendar, what used to be the first month before it was changed at the time of Exodus. So the time is correct, it's just on the civil calendar. So we see a lot coming together and just a few days ahead, and also on the celestial sign calendar too as well. So much coming together right now that we must be attentive, but we must also rehearse. What has God told us? We must be sober which means we have to put our feelings in check. We have to put them on the shelf and rest our faith in what God has said. We must be sober. 
We must make sure we do not go by our feelings. We do not go by appearances. Like the Bible says in John 7, 24, we use righteous judgment. What has God said? Let's go with that. Let's rest our faith on that. Let's go forward on that. And we must be vigilant. We must be aware that the enemy is going to try to attack us and get us down at this time. Emotionally, spiritually, physically. We must be on guard on that and be knowledgeable that he's going to try to do that. And so we ask the Lord for help. We ask the Lord for strength and wisdom. Mindful that the enemy is going to be very busy at this time. And we are also exhorted to be ready. And the more we look at the promises that Christ has told us in his word, the more boldly we can prepare ourselves and purify ourselves and make ourselves ready. So I've updated the radar review sheet in our Google Drive, just shifted the temple over to the 17th days, really all I did on that. So print that out for an updated view. Also updated it on the event study calendar. And we see a lot coming together right now. We must not just focus on where we are right now, but also keep in mind prophetically and celestially on the celestial clock and in the heavens and the signs in the heavens too. There's going to be some other major prophetic events starting in just a month too as well. And that hedges our understanding now. We are quickly running out of time before the next sign starts. And Jesus told his disciples that the tribulation events will be underway before the Revelation 12 sign appears. So when we see the Revelation 12 pregnancy cycle starting soon, and also Jupiter moving into Virgo in just a month really, that should wake us up and realize time is very short. There's going to be some major events happening soon, and that helps hedge our understanding of where we are right now. We are in an extremely important window right now that we are told to look for and has a lot of conditions that we were told to look for. And so this is why we are looking because we have faith in what God has said and what he has told us to look for. And yesterday were the celestial signs of Jupiter and Mercury in the sky. And you can find a couple more pictures on spaceweather.com in their gallery. And this is a reminder. It happened just shortly before dawn. So we talked a lot about the importance and the reminders of Shiloh rising. And remember, even in the prophecy back in Genesis, how it pictures the different stages of the lion rising, couching, and we're expecting him to rise again, rising up to reclaim his throne. And we see this acted out now in a sense of the scepter rising, along with the other pictures we looked at too, in conjunction with Mercury, Mercury the messenger. And that reminded us right now that we have to prepare our ways. Christ is coming again. Shiloh is coming. And it should catch our attention that the messenger is seen with Shiloh, the scepter here, in this rehearsal. And that's all it is. It's a rehearsal. But it reminds us right at this time, right in the middle of these three important weeks with all the patterns and pictures and celestial signs in this window, that we need to be paying attention and we need to be making ourselves ready. We need to be preparing the way. Preparing the way in our heart and making sure we are preparing the way as we go out to meet him. That was John the Baptist's job. He was the messenger. And he was sent slightly before the public ministry of Jesus Christ. And he started to get the hearts ready in the populace and remind them that Shiloh, the Messiah, was about to come onto the scene. There was a general expectation in that region and the world that they knew he was about to come. It was about the prophetic time. It was getting close to that time that Messiah would come. They had a broad understanding of prophecy and they knew that. They had the mental knowledge of it. But John the Baptist came on the scene and said, we need to prepare the way. We need to prepare our hearts. It's not enough just to have a mental knowledge that Messiah is coming. No, we have to prepare our hearts. We need to bring forth fruit to meet for repentance. We need to live as though he's coming back. And this is the whole role of the messenger, to prepare the hearts, to make the way ready. And this is the whole concept that Christ repeated to his disciples. Of when we see certain things happening, we see things coming together. We need to realize we need to be watching and we need to be ready. And he told his disciples multiple times, be ye ready when I get back. Which means you are going to have to prepare the way in your heart and life before I get there. And so this is why I constantly urge you, download our booklet, be ye ready. Read through it and rehearse what Christ told his disciples. This is what you should be doing before I come back. As servants of Christ, as redeemed servants of Christ. This is our reasonable service. This is our reasonable duty. This is how we demonstrate our love to the one who has redeemed us. By living for him first and highest above all else. And this is what he's looking for. He's looking for faithful servants. Those who obey. Those who serve. Those who go forward on what Christ has told them to do. That's being faithful. Be ye ready. And again, we see time running out with all these reminders coming together that we need to prepare our hearts, that we need to prepare the way. Right in this important window of the days of Noah and Lot, 
And in the not too distant future, we see the Revelation 12 signs starting, which means there's going to be some other prophetic events starting real soon too as well. The scene is about to change, so to speak. Now Jupiter will be entering Virgo, the constellation, if you just go by the lines that are drawn typically, it will be entering Virgo approximately on November 19th. So that's very soon. And so that basically means it's going to be starting the visual picture, the visual rehearsal of the Revelation 12 sign. It's going to be starting that pregnancy cycle on November 19th. We are running out of time. And if you went with an actual pregnancy count of full term patterns and whatnot, then that would start about December 7th, if you just counted till September 23rd, 2017. But visually, the pregnancy cycle is going to start being rehearsed on November 19th. And so this is starting very soon, very soon. And the Revelation 12 sign has nothing to do with the rapture. It's a sign that Shiloh is about to come the second time at the end of the tribulation. It's a warning. And this goes back to John the Baptist. Remember, John the Baptist's message was prepare the way that Messiah was coming. And if you remember in the Messiah prophecy, the Shiloh prophecy that Daniel made about when Christ would enter Jerusalem, he described it to the day of when Christ would enter. But John the Baptist started years before Christ entered Jerusalem. He started years before with the message, prepare ye the way. And John the Baptist is the one who announced, behold the Lamb of God. John the Baptist is the one who started the message and the countdown, so to speak, in people's minds there that he's about to come. He is about to enter to Jerusalem. He is going to be entering Jerusalem, just like he promised, just like he said in his word, prepare ye the way. His word is true. Act in faith. Live in faith on the promises. The Lamb is here. He will be entering into Jerusalem on the day that Daniel said he would. And John the Baptist was warning of this approximately three and a half years before Christ actually came and entered to Jerusalem. Think about that. Daniel's prophecy said exactly to the day when Shiloh would enter and ride into Jerusalem as the king. To Jerusalem, Ariel, the city of lions, the historic capital city of Judah. Messiah would ride in as the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king. But he would do it three and a half years after John the Baptist, the messenger, started announcing that he was going to be doing that. And that he was here, and that he was coming, and that he was going to be doing that soon. There were three and a half years of preparation and preparing the way. And then Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem to the very day, the very prophetic day that his word said he would. And so then when we look in scripture and we look in Revelation and we are given another messenger warning with the Revelation 12 sign that after that event, there's going to be three and a half years, 1,260 days, until Shiloh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, rides into Jerusalem as King of Kings. And he's going to do it to the very day, just like he did before. The Revelation 12 sign is, prepare ye the way. He is coming. He will be riding into Jerusalem. Just like he came the first time and entered to Jerusalem, sometime after the message went out. The Revelation 12 sign is, he's coming again. The king is returning. The one who came the first time was born of a woman. He's going to be coming again. And you have 1,260 days to prepare the way. That's what the Revelation 12 sign is. It's a sign of the coming of the Son of Man. That he's coming back. This pattern is in scripture and it's being repeated. And we explain this on the Judas story handout. And I've also added a note about John the Baptist too as well. The last half of the tribulation which starts after the Revelation 12 sign, that is to prepare the way. That is to prepare the hearts. And remember, the Bible even tells us in the book of Revelation that when he comes back, all the tribes of the earth are going to mourn for him. They're going to realize their heart is going to be tender when he gets there, that they're going to realize this was the Messiah. Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And we missed it all these years. Their hearts are going to be tender and ready when he gets back, when he rides into Jerusalem. And the Revelation 12 sign is the celestial marker that marks he is coming back in three and a half years. Just like he did the first time he was here. And so this understanding of these celestial events, when we look into God's word, when we look at the Shiloh prophecy, when we look at the Alpha and Omega, when we look at everything Christ told us about the celestial signs, the signs in the heavens, whether that's the Revelation 12 sign or the Shiloh Leo sign part of it, God's word has told us what's going to be happening. These are celestial events. They are on the clock. They will happen to the day, just like they did the first time. And this is why we can have faith in the shallow prophecy, because God's word said so. And the first fulfillments of it were completed to the day. 
And we go forward in faith, not on our feelings, not on our emotions, not on our circumstances either. We go forward on faith of this is what God's word says will happen. And we see it happening and unfolding. We do not know the 100% picture. We do not know the day or hour. There are other details we'd love to know. But what we do know is reflected in God's word and told us in God's word. And we see it being fulfilled. And so we can go forward in faith that it will be finished because we know the one who has promised. And so the understanding of the future prophecies with the Revelation 12 sign hedges our understanding of where we are right now. We have full expectation of the shallow portion related to Leo, Judah, being fulfilled, the gathering of his people before the Revelation 12 sign, before the tribulation starts. And Christ told us there's going to be tribulation events before the Revelation 12 sign. So we know here real soon we're going to be running out of time. So whether we understand the exact border, whether we understand exactly where down to the toenails the foot is, we may not ever have those exact details. But we know we are there and we see the celestial signs going on right now and with the scepter right on the threshold between the two and approximately at the heel and the rehearsals and scripture going on this week and the commemorative events going on this week too as well. We know God's word is true and it will be fulfilled. And so we can go forward even though there are things we don't know. So definitely download Judah's story, the study sheet here. Study it. Look it over and realize the time segment where we are right now. We're right in the thick of some major prophetic celestial events. We are running out of time. Now I am in the process of making a new booklet, the Revelation 12 Shiloh sign, the return of the king, where we're trying to consolidate a lot of this different information into one main booklet. It's not going to be as long as the Shiloh booklet because this will assume you've read the Shiloh booklet. The Shiloh portion with Leo, that deals with the gathering. But the portion that deals with the woman, it's still about Shiloh. It's still about Messiah, the one who sprang out of Judah. But the Virgo portion of it deals with that he's going to be returning at the end of the tribulation. Both of these signs deal with Shiloh, but different aspects of prophecy. One with the gathering and one that he will be returning. So please keep this project in prayer. That will be able to get it finished and published soon. And if you haven't yet, definitely download the Shiloh booklet and study the background. There's a lot that we talk about in there, including even the Revelation 12 sign briefly. But the more that we study the story and what scripture tells us to look for and what has happened before and how prophecy has been fulfilled before, that increases our faith going forward for how it's going to be fulfilled now. There's a lot we don't know. But we can look at what scripture does tell us about events of when he will be coming back with the days of Noah and Lot. And we see all that commemorated now and rehearsed in the celestial heavens too as well. And then we also see other prophetic events in just the weeks ahead that deal with other aspects that scripture talks about with prophecy too as well. So our understanding, our faith, rests entirely on what does God's word say about these events? What does God's word say about these commemorative events? What does God's word tell us we should be looking for? Our faith rests entirely on God's word. And whenever we have questions or doubts or Satan tries to tempt us to not have faith in God's word, the first place we should be going back to is God's word. And again, I highly recommend you read the entire chapter of Hebrews 11. Look at the examples of faith that Christ records for us. And these examples of faith are recorded for our learning. So we could look at them and say, in spite of the circumstances that they were going through, they were able to have faith in God and go forward and do what he wanted them to do in their particular circumstances. They listened to God. They listened to his promises. They spent time with him and they went forward in obedience, being faithful, even though there are things that they did not know, because their faith rested on what God said in God's word. And that is the same place we should put our faith and trust in God's word. Even when we don't know, even when we don't feel like it, we can put our faith in what God has said and in his word. And I highly recommend you also read the book of Job chapter one and chapter two. If anyone was going through circumstances and feelings and the whole roller coaster of emotions, it was Job. Yet he was still able to have his faith fixed on God. And this chapter is an incredible picture and reminder and rehearsal for us of even when our emotions aren't where we'd like them to be, even when our circumstances are at their worst, we can still have faith in God. Job's wife allowed her circumstances to take her eyes off of God and what God had said and how he was faithful. Job reminded her and was an example that we can have faith in God in spite of our circumstances. There are many dark days that we go through where the only thing we have to hold on to is the promises in God's word. 
and we can go forward on that. And Job is an example of that. And I also recommend you read Luke 24, The Road to Emmaus, again, but keeping in mind what we've been covering lately. And look at the disciples' faith in this chapter and how dangerously close they came to allowing their circumstances and their feelings to dictate their faith. Your circumstances will either determine your faith or your faith will determine the outlook of your circumstances. This is why we need to be sober. This is why we need to be vigilant, and this is why we need to be in God's Word. To remind ourselves constantly of what we should be focusing on and keep our focus on and not be distracted with other things, fix our focus where it should be. So definitely read Luke 24 again. And then also in our booklet, Be Ye Ready, I would recommend you read our article, Shall He Find Faith? This is what Christ is looking for when He returns, and it's going to be demonstrated in our life of what we fix our life and our heart and our focus on right now. So your homework again, write this down, is read Hebrews chapter 11, read Job chapter 1 and 2, read Luke 24, and then read Shall He Find Faith. The wise men were able to go forward in faith because they knew the promises, they knew the prophecy, they knew the celestial signs they saw. There was a lot that they did not know too as well. They did not even know where the king was, yet they went forward anyway. And they had a lot of frustration along the way and exhaustion and different circumstances and disappointments. Yet they still went forward in faith because their faith rested on God's word and the prophecies and the signs that they were being shown. Romans 10:17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Our faith is entirely on God's word, not on our feelings, not on our circumstances, not on our friends, not on anything else. But it rests entirely on the Word of God. And if you want to build up your faith, if you want to build up your shield of faith, it's only going to come. It's only going to come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Whenever we have doubts about what's going on right now or even in our own personal situations and circumstances, we go to God's Word. We spend time with God. That is the only thing that will build up our faith. And this is what we need to be reminded of at this time, is to keep our faith where it should be, in what it should be, and to hold up our shield of faith against the darts of doubt that the enemy is going to throw at this time. Our shield of faith is bolstered by the Word of God. The more time we spend in God's Word, the stronger our faith will be. The more we keep our eyes fixed on what God has promised and what He has said, the stronger our faith will be. The more we can encourage each other about what God has said and what He has promised and how He has been faithful, the more we can strengthen others' faith, and the more our faith will be strengthened too as well. Christ wants us to be ready, and we will be ready by building our faith, holding up our shield of faith, and looking into the Word of God. That is where it's rest. That is how we stay, and that is how we go forward. Faith in God's Word. So your homework is to look into God's Word, study faith, ask the Lord for wisdom as you read these passages of how you can implement faith, of how you can guard your faith at this time, and how you can encourage others' faith at this time too as well. Shall he find faith? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Spend time with the word of God this week as you serve him first and highest above all else. Maranatha.